Welcome to the Love Positivism Podcast. I'm Shireen Oberg and I'm a yoga teacher and author devoted to the path of healing and heart-based living. And I want to help you to step into what you truly are and to your highest potential. On this podcast, I share with you tools and insights to help you move ever forward on your spiritual and healing path. With guests from all over the world, from different wisdom traditions, I wish to create a web of loving energy that permeates the whole world to create more love and peace. You can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more guidance and love. Hi everyone, and welcome back to this week's podcast episode. I'm so grateful that you're here. And today I'm going to be speaking solo. I wanted to tap in to what's going on right now and also to share a little bit of my take on these different astrological events, earth shifts and everything that's going on and what it means to also be in ceremony and ritual with everything that is happening and everything that is growing within us. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So this week has, many of you have probably sensed this, but it's been a very intense week with a lot of shifts happening. We've had a lot of astrological things going on. And also, I feel like uh, each week since the emergence of the eclipse season has been unfolding something new within us. So eclipses don't happen that often. It's about every six months. And the eclipses happen when we are connecting together with the sun and the moon and we're aligning our karma and dharma, the soul's path, the soul's purpose, our higher evolutionary point um, and also working with that which has been and everything that's been in the past and everything that we have from past lives, everything kind of merges into this time frame right now because in truth time is not linear, it's all working at the same time and we're in a spiral that spirals into itself. So at this time when we're having eclipses, which we've also talked a lot about in the past previous episodes, um, we are tapping into that both on a collective level and on an individual level, where we're going towards and what we're leaving and also elapsing everything together. So right now, we had about two weeks ago a uh, north node, let's say dharmic energy portal opening up for us in Taurus, which means that we are we were invited to step further into our uh, true divine essence when it came to also connecting with our embodiment and Mother Earth and our senses and this very much divine feminine state that we as a collective are asked to move into. And tomorrow, or the day after, it depends on which uh, time zone you're in, but it would be very late on Sunday the 15th for people who are on the western side of the world, and then early Monday the 16th for those of us who are on the eastern side of the world. Um, it's going to be a beautiful full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus, uh, sorry, in Scorpio, the opposite sign of Taurus. So we had the earth sign, new moon, about two weeks ago. Now we have a full moon in the opposite sign. That's how it always works. It's always the opposite signs who are working together. And in Scorpio, the moon becomes much more intense. It's telling us to go very deep into ourselves and our subconscious, into our dreams, our mystical 
path, the unseen, and also working with the ancestral energy, the deep and dark womb. It's much more uh, transformative uh, in a sense if we compare what Taurus is in comparison to Scorpio. So it's also what we value, but on a higher level, and also how are we at this time balancing our more physical embodied life with that of our more mysterious and spiritual path. And these are not two separate things. These are one thing, but we have learned to segregate just as everything else that we're in our mind is separate. It's not. So at this time, with this Scorpio full moon, and full moons are highlighting whatever is hidden in the dark, in the shadows, and also our subconscious, and even more when it's in Scorpio. So with this, I see that there's great potential for healing. And maybe things have come up for you these past days that have been opening up this portal within you. And I wrote about this yesterday, about al alchemical healing, transformation, taking your power back and releasing things that have held you back from a place where maybe in a subconscious place you've been programmed to be and feel and think a certain way. And that is a shadow as well. So at this time, with this water element uh, and also this very mystical aspect of Scorpio, we can tap in much deeper and go into that deep wound that we might be carrying that is not completely and fully enlightened yet or hasn't come out from the shadows for us to fully experience and things that we push away. It's very important to go to the root of that feeling or that sense of not feeling empowered or feeling held back in any way and also going to the root of when that started to see where maybe a trauma or a wounding started. So the Scorpio energy is a lot to do with our psyche and, and uh, maybe many of you feel already today that things have come up in your dreams and things are physically feeling a little bit unbalanced, maybe nauseousness or any physical thing that you might be experiencing now can have to do with this lunation that we have tomorrow, May 15th or May 16th, depending on where you are. So for this, we're, we have this energy, but we also have a background if we look into how the week has been, is that we did enter Mercury retrograde season. And in this season, we are really being asked to slow down our minds, which is so beautiful. So I really love this retrograde in that sense, because we no longer can just go on and on with everything that we've planned and everything that we are trying to do, because the, the universe is telling us to stop and integrate a little bit, reviewing, just re-evaluating, rethinking, changing our thought patterns because Mercury went retrograde in its own sign, uh, Gemini. And these both, when they are like, when, when Mercury is in this home sign, it amplifies the energy of the mind, communication, the logical thinking, the learning. And when it goes retrograde here, it's really asking us to slow down. And that's when meditation might become more easy. Maybe we are, we have experienced some brain fog or it's not a negative thing. It's just that we need to learn how to slow down. And the universe is working with us when we need something. It does show up in this way. So we can learn how to harness the Mercury retrograde energy to our benefit. Start like scheduling that the, these periods of times so you're slowing down and being more mindful and listening deeper and, and really thinking about things on a content contemplative level and into your heart space instead of your mind and the logics all the time because things that are logical to the mind might not be logical to the heart 
So now is a really beautiful time for that. And so we started with that in the beginning of the week, together with the fact that Jupiter, the amplifier, the great benefic, the the expansive energy, the good luck planet went into Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, which is a sign of initiation, forward moving. It's our state of birthing. It's our connection to our identity in this world, our assertiveness, our courage. So this is being amplified right now. So there we have fire. And with this upcoming year with Jupiter in Aries, we will see it's Aries is more of the young energy. It's fire. So it's young. Uh, it's divine masculine. This will be amplified within us so we are courageous to move forward even more and this is also a deep aspect of the fierce goddess so it's not only the divine masculine it is the divine feminine in her very powerful state as well to move forward it's uh, durga energy it's this very the lioness just moving forward and um, also rebirthing ourselves so with all of this that happened, moving into the end of this week, beginning of next week, with this eclipse, when there's an eclipse, the either the sun or the moon is darkened. And at this upcoming eclipse, we have the lunar eclipse. So the moon, that which is highlighting our shadows is becoming darkened. Our intuition, our inner knowing, our priestessing, all of this is being heightened because there's an eclipse and also things that has to be eclipsed out will because at this time we are seeing what we need to release and let go of. So we're no longer needing to carry anything that has been not serving our path. We can look back and see how it's how it was important for our evolution and how beautiful and divine that is, but how we can move forward from something that is very familiar to us that we've held on to, but that might not serve us anymore to move forward. So tomorrow, um, May 15th at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time in the U.S. and 1 p.m. Uh, or 10 a.m. Western time, 1 p.m., Eastern Time on Sunday, May 15th. That would be 7 p.m. Central European Time. Me and evolutionary astrologer Diana Westley will have an online gathering and ceremony and ritual for this beautiful and potent Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse. And the, what it means to be in ceremony is to be in communion with yourself, with the universe, in this case with the moon, and with other sisters or brothers in the circle, to just tap into this, to be in meditation with this energy in order for you to harness this portal, this opening, understanding it deeper from yourself, from your own experience, because it's the deep inner healing starts from within you becoming aware and conscious of what needs to be healed. It will be a ceremony to support your transformation and evolution into a more heart-centered space and also to understand how you're connected not only with your physical lineage but also the lineage of your soul and to reclaim your power and to learn how to be with something that might be discomforting at this moment. Fears, old karmic patterns, old karmic wounds, everything that needs to maybe die out now. And the processes that we start now will be going on for six months because eclipses do stay with us for a much longer time than a regular uh, lunation. So the, the work we are doing now will last until the next set of eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio 
So that, that would be the new moon in Scorpio and the full moon in Taurus. And at a ceremony, you might wonder what we're doing. Ceremony can be done in so many ways. But the way I, I hold space in a ceremony is from a healing space, first and foremost. And I've worked with channeling for so many years now. And I do tap into everyone who's there uh, to really just be as supportive as possible. And we always call in the divine motherly energy and all of her forms because we really base our work in the divine womb, the divine womb creation. Uh, We work with the goddesses. Diana beautifully always shares the astrology in a deeper sense that can connect more personally with your astrological blueprint and also how the goddesses, the asteroids are connected to every lunation, which is not spoken about as much in, in common astrological talks. So she has great, beautiful insight to lead and guide us into a deeper understanding of the planets and that means a deeper understanding of ourselves as well because we're not disconnected and when we're working with the goddess we're working with ourselves as well because it in the end if everything is one the everything that we see around us is just other aspects of ourselves but i really um convey my priestess lineage in every ceremony to help support and guide myself and others and to also have reverence and devotion to the goddess the mother and everything that is holding us that has birthed us that nourishes us so we will be working especially at this time with the goddess that is more fierce and more in the dark shadows that we are needing to create space for it it, and and enable some enlightenment into to be able to move forward and to balance the the darkness and the light, to balance the feminine and masculine, the intuitive and the more logical knowing. So we will also practice a lot of, we always do embodied practices as well and especially using the voice and breath to mantras we do meditations, we set intentions, we do physical rituals in this circle. And everyone who's joining are usually joining from all over the world. So we can see that we're creating a grid in this beautiful ceremony and circle every time. And even if you can't uh, join live, we always record it. And I mean, the portal is open for the next coming days and and two weeks until the next new moon. So you have a lot of time. And even if you join live, you will get the recording. You can work with it afterwards as well. If you are on a spiritual path of healing and uh, self-realization, I always recommend that you do some type of ceremony or ritual around these potent times. And even if you're doing it on your own, just being in communion is so important. Being in a group ceremony, it does really amplify the energy even more. And you also get the chance to share if you want and ask questions to be a little bit more guided. And even me who facilitates circles and ceremonies and classes, and I've been teaching for many, many years, I also love to have someone hold space for me when I'm do when I'm in ceremony or when when I'm learning something because it does amplify somehow the energy of that frequency that I'm trying to tap into so we're really excited to celebrate this and if you're just curious about the ceremony tomorrow you can connect with me or Diana. I will also link to uh, the event page on in the show notes in this podcast episode. 
And if you have any other questions, connect with me. Let me know how this astrological time has been feeling for you. And also, I'm very interested in knowing if you've had any profound dreams, meetings, uh, astral travels, because I feel like that's been go going on for me almost the whole week leading up to this uh, beautiful eclipse. So I would love for you to share. And let's together just take a deep inhalation in through your nose and a long exhalation through your mouth <sighs> and feel this present moment right now. Integrate what needs to be integrated and release anything that is not serving you. And I hope to connect with you all soon. Have a beautiful weekend, beautiful full moon, and hope to see you at the ceremony.